like I never left. Uh, Mike Jack with the leather red. Uh, I'm young thriller, him manila, anthrax, breathing the killer. Uh, Smoking that now, fist up black crowd, boom boom black blow, bring them straps out. Lyrical bullets, you ain't really got a bullet, but I really am a bully when that bell ring act out. What's up? What's going on, y'all? I'm Nux. Alright, 16 with 16, episode 2. Yeah. Next we snapping is in the building. Let me shout out Nux yeah, for coming right, through. Let's uh, get this exclusive. Alright, uh, for the <coughs> introduce yourself for the people that, that don't know. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm Nux be snapping from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a hip hop artist. Uh, uh, I'm a, I'm an all around creative. I'm not uh, necessarily an artist in the concept of like drawing or anything like that. But I'm an artist in the sense of I I have I have visions Most definitely. and and I I want to see those visions come to light. So like the world is a is like a big ass canvas. So it's your your duty to leave your mark as you see fit and and I'm, I'm a motherfucker that's gonna leave his mark on me all right so <coughs> where, where part of st louis are you from i'm from the west side west side of st louis missouri uh i grew up like off of del mar king's highway all the way down to like del mar skinker uh bouncing back and forth between my house and my granny house we just all the west side, so how shouts, out, shouts out to the west. West side, either. Did it change who you are today, or how did it affect you? It made me realize that, like, life is really what you make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I grew up on the west side, but I uh, I was raised in like a West County school system. Okay. So even though like Monday through Wednesday. I was getting bust out of the city to like a better part of the greater St. Louis area to receive like my education. So like that's where I made most of my relationships. That's where I made most of my friends. Like like some days I'd be the only black face in the room, but mm -hmm. you know, I ride a bus with a you know bus of black people, get back home. I don't see nothing but black people, you know, from Friday to Monday. <coughs> Like, did that ever make you feel some type of way when you got back to the city? Um, I ain't gonna fake it, yeah. Like, I felt like, like, I felt like I could run shit in the county. I felt like I could run shit in the county. Like, bro, where you go to school at? You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it just goes to show the, the, the difference and you know what I'm saying, the the systems and how separated the city really is. Well, like I uh like right now I'm a barber and I deal with a lot of people that 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 come and say they don't realize how segregated St. Louis is and like still is to this day is damn near twenty twenty and it's still like super separated. And, and people notice that, and like as a kid growing up, you have no choice but to to notice it. Mm -hmm. what, at what age did you realize that you wanted to rap? I had to say, honestly, like four or five, yeah, early. super early. Okay. Like super early, uh, performing other people's songs like wholeheartedly, like learning records uh and then like six seven having like cassettes like mixed cassettes my dad would make me with like naughty by nature and buster rhymes and dmx and you know what i'm saying like all yeah. these heavy hitters and i'm just like enthralled and i uh so like i'm i'm like dude i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this like so like from that point wasn't no tabletop safe i'm making beats i'm rapping <laughs> with no wall my granny that's the only time she yell at me boy stop beating those stuff but like i just fell in love with it uh by the time i'm eight my uh my brother make a friend and his dad is an engineer 
So like he got a whole studio set up in his basement. So I uh I tell him I like I tell him my interest in music. He invite me down, like show me all his shit. Like I'm he let me play on his MPC. He got like the motif back in the day, like all the shits, like mm -hmm. drum sets, everything, anything like you can imagine, he had down there in that studio. Shouts out to Jay Fahrenheit, uh, Mr. Bardot. Thank you. Thank you for exposing me to that so young and allowing me to record my first record. So like, I record, I, I wrote a rap for a, a, a talent show, came out victorious. And uh, so when I went to Buddy Crib, he just like put on an instrumental and I like, Disregarded the tempo of the beat, <laughs> like said fuck everything and just recorded my rap, like the rap that I had. It, it wasn't on beat, it wasn't on like, but that's the first time I recorded a song when I was eight years old. And, and like hearing yourself on the record for the first time, regardless of how trash it is, is like a magical feeling. But I say that I, I probably orchestrate my 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 approach to to rap more so in a uh like Andre 3000 meets like mixtape Wayne meets fucking Twister and just like that's a crazy combo it is but like storytelling wordplay Okay. Witty punchlines and just like rapidly rap as fast as you can, like make people have to rewind it twice, slow it down, and still have to, you know, sleep on what you said. Like that's what that's that's what I uh, I grew up on, and that's how I approach it. Like best place to get China win in STL. I'm talking about fried rice, chicken wings, crab ragoon, what you got? Y'all finna have the people on my <laughs> head. Man, back when, I say, I'ma just say, yeah, bun for the culture. Okay, okay. Yeah, bun okay. right there off of Goodfellow and Natural Bridge. Yeah. You gotta pull into the alley. <laughs> but a rule of thumb, if you come to St. Louis, if your life not in danger, if your life not in danger, chances are it ain't that good.